Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome to an awesome brand new video and today we're gonna be talking about basically um, certain references in the book that I didn't even exactly know was gonna be inside of the book. So I'm pretty sure without further ado you want me to start getting on with the video especially after that one week hiatus I've been having on my channel. So let's do this thing! Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. <laughs> Alright, so in the first part of this video, I'm going to start off with this very interesting clue that I found. If you remember the 2015 Halloween special that Gravity Falls had on that year, you may remember the Hand Witch. At the introduction of the episode, we can see Stanley with the customer going inside of the shack. Stanley's way of trying to convince the customer to buy something from the shack, however, is to make up legendary stories. And at first, I was most certainly confident that these were all made up stories. But however, after reading a certain page in this journal, it makes me think otherwise. And to about one one thirds of the book, Ford describes the palm reader, also known as, well, to us, the hand witch. She is discovered surrounded by a huge crowd of the town. So Ford investigates and decides to go inside of her tent. As he's going inside, he notices a bunch of hands in the shadows, but he thinks it's just his imagination at first. And she is later described to be possibly a fortune teller, since she also knows his name. She says, what took you so long, Sixer? And of course, not many people know that about him. Before he could even ask how she knew that about him, she sets down four cards on the table. I'll try to analyze these four cards, but as of right now, let's continue on to what she says next. After placing the four cards down, she says, Someone very close to you is deceiving you. You have chosen the wrong allies. You will live two lives and both of them too short, unless you change now. Then, at the very bottom, she gives him a ring and she says this, When this is blue, you may pull through. When this is black, you can't turn back. I guess when you're black, you really can't turn back. And if you were to continue on further into the story, you would see this diagram of the hand, or well, Ford's hand. One reference is what she says here. It says trigger finger. She said, I need to think before I shoot. And if you watch the episode We're Mageddon Part 1, you would know exactly what that's referring to. The next one is called Long Wisdom. She claimed that he was too smart for his own good. Ford takes this as a compliment, but in all honesty, she was probably saying, dude, Ford, you're being deceived. You're an idiot. A smart person such as yourself should not be that easily deceived. However, that is my take on the situation, maybe that's not what she meant. And up to the top left, it says short relationships. It says no one wants to hold a rose with too many thorns. And despite Ford's attempt to getting into relationships, maybe that's the reason why no girl actually wanted to go out with him. Maybe his life is just too complicated for some people and they just can't handle the dark tragedies that come behind it. And once again, it says a crossroads at the bottom left of this diagram. And once again, very soon, he is being warned that he will have to make a choice. And that choice my friend is getting the living crap away from Bill Cipher. And the next and very last one is called a broken lifeline. She claims that sometime in the future, Ford's lifeline will end and abruptly start again sometime later. Once again, we are referring to Weird Mageddon because remember, Ford gets frozen into the golden statue state twice. So once again, this possibly was a foreshadow of what was going to happen to Ford into the future because his heart possibly stopped and so did everything else once he was frozen at that golden stage. And there's a theory that came to mind as I was reading these pages. Could it have been possible that Bill Cipher was using this psychic as an advantage to know some of the future ahead of time? And besides the fact that he does have some sort of connection with Time Baby, this still could be another explanation of how he knows some things. And don't you dare think I forgot all about the four cards, I'm still talking about that. And before I officially begin, I just want to say that I want to give you guys a disclaimer disclaiming the fact that I do not know the official meanings of every single card. Instead, I'm going to do my very best to try and analyze them. The first card displays mountains, trees, and a path that seems to be lit up by the moon in the center. Altogether, I believe it means that at first, even though Fort will seem to be walking on a lit up path, the deceptionist snake, known as Bill Cipher himself, only will harm him, especially since there is a snake in the middle of a triangle. The third represents Ford becoming a fighter and he will try to go against Bill, but in the end, according to the fourth card, it will only lead to his own demise or death depicting from the skull shown. And like seriously, no joke, Gravity Falls just got 10 times more real. <sighs> if only they showed all this inside the show itself. But instead of whining about how it ended, let's talk about Wendy's potential grandfather. Yes, 
her grandfather. The ghost lumberjack that we saw in the episode Northwest Mansion Nowhere could be the most likely potential suspect of all this. Going into about three-fourths into the book, Dipper reveals a picture of a man by the name of Archibald Corduroy. And I guess that would indeed make perfect sense since he was too a lumberjack. And he is confirmed to be her relative since he matches with how he is portrayed in the episode perfectly, including the bow and the beard. Seriously, why do certain characters have objects in their beards? Hey, why does my beard have a bandage? Does that even make sense? Why has no one pointed that out? And now, for the last relativity talk of the day. Old Man McGucket's wife was slightly exposed on this page of the book. Unfortunately, her face is yet to be seen, but at least we have somewhat of an idea of how she looks. Also, Ford says that he has a similar picture of Nikola Tesla, who was an inventor in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Give it a like if you liked the video, of course, and subscribe. However, if you still have not subscribed, you can subscribe below. And if you already are subscribed, then, uh, I guess you can unsubscribe and then subscribe back again. Okay, no, that's stupid. Share my channel with people and tell them to subscribe as well. This has been The Next Big Thing, signing off. I'll catch you on the next video. Peace. All right, I get it. You're creepy. Anyway, let's talk more watching. Get your hands off my watch!